folks, Dave here, and I am back at long last after a fantastic Christmas break. Hope you guys had a good one as well. I'm all rested up and ready to get back into some Fallout building. If you missed it over the break, both parts of the Fallout 4 Bedford Station Custom Settlement Tour, which was of course a massive railroad depot and Minuteman Battle Train, both parts of that video are now live. And in that video, I had hidden some General Dave's Holiday Eggnog. Joel, who is touring with me, said that he wished it existed in real life. Well, over the weekend, just this week, I actually made some homemade eggnog and bottled it with some custom General Dave logos and handed it out to the casual shenanigans crew, including Joel. And, well, of course, he had to make a video with it. I won't spoil it for you guys. It's linked in the description as well as on the screen right now if you want to check that out. I've also put links down there. Uh, for the Bedford Station tour, just in case you missed out, as it was probably one of the largest tours for last year. Back on topic though, as you guys can see, I am at what was once Hangman's Alley, and is now the location of Uncle Joel's Premium Bathhouse and Funhouse. It's always nice to get a break from the Minutemen builds to do something a bit different, and of course, this build is focused around Joel's in-game character, which is kind of a raider, but more of really a charlatan, I guess, a post-apocalyptic con man, if you will. If you guys remember the concept from the original Let's Build episode, what we've got here is a bathhouse right in the middle of apocalyptic Boston here, which is designed to grab your average passerby's attention. And once you arrive, as you can see, I've been working on this welcome area where you're going to buy your ticket to go into the bathhouse. And of course, Joel being Joel, he's designed this out in his design document as just one giant trap. We're going to work on this today. As you guys see, once you buy your tickets, it's essentially just a super crappy public shower. So... We worked on this on a, uh, yeah, a live build, yes. both me and Joel originally, and we're hoping to do more of that live with you guys here shortly because that was a blast. But today I'm going to work a bit more on just making parts of this build look a bit more realistic. I'm going to ride the elevator to the top here, which is going to be the premium section as you can see. My goal is to take Joel's design for the settlement and make it look possible. In the last Let's Build episode, I had taken this premium level bathhouse, which Joel described as being made of just totally glass. I tried to make it look a bit more realistic and not like a, I keep calling it a Minecraft, you know, floating box in the sky. But I think I actually made it too scrappy and you guys agreed after that Let's Build episode. So here's what I've been working on. First of all, I'm adding some more lights and more are coming uh, along the way as I add more here and there. The additional lights that we're adding are going to give it that ridiculous uh, funhouse look that Joel's going for. I wanted to show you guys this at night so you can kind of see what that purple light adds to the top section here. And I've got these spotlights up now as well just to add some extra crazy lighting. We're probably going to add some more colored lights and some uh, strobe lights and stuff like that, but this is what I've done with the premium section since we last did a Let's Build episode. You guys can also see I've removed some of the interior walls to just make the whole room feel bigger and, uh, well, more exposed because that's the idea. You are going to get that premium bathhouse experience if you buy the premium ticket, but awkwardly, Joel wants the entire area just encased in glass. So it's like a, a Catch-22, you know, you've got a pretty nice shower facility for the apocalypse and we're gonna have uh, butlers on call as well but then of course you're over the other shower area and everyone can see you that's why I've got the toilet here just in the middle of the room I think it kind of works in that uh, kind of crazy fallout way where you do have some unusual characters and locations that you can discover I think this would fit in what I've tried to do is make it look, uh, you know, realistic. There's supports and uh, struts and whatnot, but it's still lots of glass, which has a little bit of a crack in the texture, if you guys can see. 
What I've also done since last time is replace the warehouse walls with greenhouse walls. These have less of that corrugated metal and just more of the window pieces, so it's just more, you know, open and glassy feeling like I think Joel originally intended. To give it structural support though, because again I'm balancing Joel's ridiculous glass design with what uh, immersion requires for me, I've got to make it look structurally sound. And to do that, I've added these wooden pillars that crisscross the whole structure. I'm going to go ahead and change our game hours so you guys can see what's going on here. Beautiful morning. Oh, forgot the two in the command. That's pretty dark. Let's try 11 a.m. There we go. Okay. And I'll go into free cam so you guys can see what this is looking like right here. So I still have these collapsed crane things that are being used to support the uh, premium raised area of this bathhouse. But as you guys can see by removing a lot of those corrugated metal warehouse pieces, it does feel a little bit more, you know, like a premium location. But I've still got all these supports, so it seems like it's a structure that could actually be, uh, it actually exists in the world. With enough labor and enough caps, this could be something that was built. And that's the whole idea behind it. Just ignore these stairwells for now. I'm just using them to go back and forth and work on the build. So let me know what you guys think of these updates to the bathhouse and where I can go with it now. I've got one central beam that the claws right here kind of uh, attach to right there. I think that does it for the overhead supports. I thought about tilting the whole thing a little bit, but that would be an absolute nightmare to work with, and I don't think it would add a whole lot to the look. So for now, I'm not gonna bother tilting it. I'll just keep it, you know, level. There's still quite a lot left to do in this build. We've gotta finish the premium areas and of course get final Joel approval on the designs. Uh, then we have to work on this medium class shower facility which Joel described as like a almost military style facility where there's going to be a bunch of open stalls with numbers over them so that'll be what you pay the medium amount of caps for and then of course back here in the back we're going to have the super crappy uh, cheapo version which you'll only get to see what you paid for once you climb all these catwalks and go around the corner at which point you've already paid your money no refunds you're swimming in a sewer pit basically it's a complete and total ripoff. Again, I like the design. It's hilarious. I think I can make it work well within the world, but for me, it's just got to be architecturally sound and look like it could really exist in the world, which is why these shack stairs that I'm currently using for construction are gonna be removed as soon as I'm done with them. Oh, and yeah, if you guys tuned in last time, you'll notice that uh, the branding room is missing up there. I completely forgot to quick save after the last 15 minutes of building, so I've got to rebuild that, but I was going to make some changes to it anyway. So, no big loss there, I guess. So, what I've done, guys, with this entranceway is opened it up some and also used these deco metal walls and some really nice uh, lights from the Homemaker mod that cast some really nice shadows along with this purple light for effect. Joel wants this entire entranceway to be uh, completely open and inviting up to the point where you buy your tickets. Everything beyond the doors is supposed to remain a secret, but this part right here, you know, it'll have security guards, but it's got to be open so that people who are out here waiting in line can, you know, be all excited about, oh man, that looks like high tech and, you know, exclusive. I can't wait to get my ticket and go in. And then, of course, once you go in, it's awful. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to work on first today is I want to spend some more time working on this welcome area just because I think it's got a lot of potential. So enough yammering on for today. Let's get building here, guys. And the first thing I'm going to do is what immersion requires. And that is, let's assume that Joel's minions have constructed these bits of wall from uh, buildings in downtown Boston. Well, if the front facade looks pretty good, then the back is probably going to look 
pretty crappy. Let's turn off snapping here for a minute. Um, I want to have these supports here like once you kind of get behind the curtain, if you will, it's just barely being held together. So to do that, I'm going to use some of these wooden pillars, and then under structures and miscellaneous, I should have some uh, horizontal pillars as well. Yeah, these right here. Basically, we just want to make it look like once you come around here and actually see this place, you're going to go, oh, wow, this thing is, you know, barely standing upright. It's completely not safe once you, again, see behind the curtain, if you will. Okay, here we go. Some more of these wooden pillars, if I can get them angled just right. I might have to do them like this manually. Thank you, place everywhere mod. So yeah, you like go in and there's just these arm braces holding the walls up. It's like a, you know, fake old west town almost, or like a theme park. Everything is just a facade to take your money. <laughs> these braces are a bit annoying to work with because they don't like to snap onto anything. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty crappy. Oh, here we go. I can have a brace coming off of the uh, stairwell here. You guys also asked in the previous Let's Build episode why my settlers just looked like, you know, settlers, not like raiders. Well, that's because I usually do the settler outfits last, so these guys for now just look like standard guys. We're gonna have them decked out in, like, butler uniforms for the people who are actually working at this uh, <laughs> scammy bathhouse. And then we'll probably have some settlers that are making use of the facilities and whatnot as well. That brace was poking through a bit. There we go. So this is going to be the ticket counter where you choose, uh, do you want the ticket for the, uh, you know, the medium baths here or the premium baths, which are up the elevator or behind crappy door number one, the catwalk that goes to the super cheap uh, area. It is funny that the super cheap area and the premium area are going to share the same initial door, but that's just how the layout worked. I think we'll be fine doing it like that. And I think I'm going to do some custom signs uh, for in here, like, that have the ticket prices maybe on, like, a chalkboard where they can change the prices day to day. Like, it'll go up without any kind of warning. So, say you've been waiting outside in line for your chance to experience this premium bathhouse, and then you find out, oh, man, the prices went up again. Let's see, I don't think the diner counters are a good fit. How about the wood? Shop counter outer. Yeah, that could work. Let's actually um, store that for a second. Let's do this piece right here. Just check real quick and see what other ones we've got. Okay, there's those squared off pieces. Do I have snapping on? There we go. Snapping was turned off. No wonder nothing was working. I kind of want this to be uh, double width. So I'm going to build that up uh, manually. Thanks to the Place Everywhere tool. I'm just going to scoot this one back like that. I just wanted to use these because I don't usually use this particular countertop because it's so narrow. Ooh, that one piece is just not wanting to cooperate. 
Maybe we'll do without it then. Yeah. So that leaves room for the cash registers and all of that jazz. <laughs> Gotta have someone here to punch tickets. I probably have one of those animation rugs where I can actually have them standing there uh, punching tickets. That'd be a great touch. Just looking for any kind of other, you know, premium furniture that could go in here to make the place really feel fancy. Oh my. I'm gonna put this up here in the sky, this uh, fancy table with the drapery over it. So that's definitely gonna go up uh, in the top uh, premium bathhouse area. Right down here, I'm going to shrink it down some. And, oh yeah, we're going to put some curtains in here. Again, this is supposed to be the front of the facade. This is what gets people excited about blindly paying caps for some crazy bathhouse experience, only to discover, once they get inside, that they've been duped. We have this cash register, but kind of want to look at what uh, what's the decorating mod Creative Clutter has. Vendors, cooking, other. Okay, those are all like workstation ones. Let's look at. Uh, where would that register be? Furniture, containers. This is pretty scrappy stuff, so I probably won't use much of it, but I know that there's a cash register in here somewhere. I saw it. Right there. Gotta get that premium register going. And yeah, as you guys can see, I used some of the uh, deco, like concrete curved stairs and stuff uh, to fill in this area. And then I used the roof trims to fill in the gaps, just so it feels like uh, you're in a nice lobby space even though it's all rusted out and was built, again, off of probably looted bits of buildings from downtown here. They want it to look as convincing as possible. Anything else? Ooh, crystals. Where are those from? What on earth? Not even sure where those came from. Looking through our other decorations here, some cigars would be appropriate. Ah, post-war cigarette machine. Get a smoke where you go in for your premium uh, experience. Put the smokes back there. I guess there's really no room for the cigarette machine. Nice vase instead. Vault Tech cigarette machine. <laughs> you gotta sell all the vices, right? Ooh, which reminds me. 
should we put a uh, a gambling slot machine in here as well? What is that under resources? I think. <laughs> I'll have to get final Joel approval for all this. See, it is his settlement design, but I feel like taking extra caps from people who are waiting for their turn to go into the bathhouse with their ticket, taking extra caps from them with the cigarette machine and the slot machine definitely fits. Let's see, we got these candles here. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We need to get some paintings going. I flipped this homemaker light upside down because it was like this one originally and just casting light up. I wanted those cool shadows, so I flipped it. it took a while to get the axis lined up right, but gives a really nice bit of shadows to the interior here. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, let's do the paintings next. Go past our Minutemen paintings and the Waffle House. What mod adds the Waffle House? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. No landscapes. I'm thinking perhaps just the modern artwork. Which would be close to the end. That begs the question, where would the pricing board be? Um, yeah, let's make this a bit smaller. And before I do any more paintings, let me go ahead and go right over to where I know the uh, blackboard is. Let's see. Homemaker, decorations, miscellaneous, interior, <laughs> soundproofing. There's the cork board. There is the shock board. So that's going to be where I put the custom uh, texture for the price list. Go ahead and do a quick save. Ooh, that was a long one. Oh, this is looking really cool. Yeah, so from the outside, you're going to have this ridiculous entranceway totally over the top with the generator spewing out smoke to power it all. Crazy lights, the wait time. We're going to have those, um, what are they? The, um, the waiting line ropes out here to make the line, which I might do that as well in a minute. Um... Joel's anarchy flag and then you go in here and it's just like oh wow what kind of super premium experience am I about to well experience we'll have these sliding doors sealed up <laughs> and then you go in I guess we need a curtain to block the door as well once you get in, you're just like, oh, what is this garbage I've paid for? Just shower heads lined up in a row. And again, if you paid for the cheapest ticket, you're escorted around the corner to literally just a cesspool of garbage, sewage, rust, and uh, tetanus, I imagine. I'm liking the contrast, guys, between the inside and uh, <laughs> the entranceway. We definitely need a curtain, I think, to to block the door. Ooh, or as a alternative, guys, what if we had curtains uh, behind the door? So when it opened, you couldn't quite see uh, what was inside. Oh, 
I'll have to hang these off of something, but... It's like, oh, what is this premium experience just inside the door here? They've got curtains and everything. Oh, the curtain's just soaking in the water. Yeah, I'll have like a, a pillar up there that's got the curtains draped off of it, I think. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So when the door opens, you really can't tell what's going on. <laughs> Until you turn the corner. You realize what you've gotten yourself into. I like that guy that's just stuck up there in the premium section. He's been up there since I started building here. Trapped. Now for this side, I'm going to do some curtains, but only two of them, just because uh, this door is already blocking part of the view. But I'll put some curtains here for the uh, premium elevator, and again, I'll be going through and putting some pillars to hang the curtains off of. Whoa, hello, ghoul, right in my face. And this door is going to be sealed up. This is just the uh, access way for getting behind the wall here. Well, I should have opened that door before I went back into workshop mode. Need to put some cinder block under that piece right there, too. Anyway, okay, so we've got our curtains in place. That solves the problem of what happens when the door opens to let someone in. Well, now you can't see what's going on around the corner. Got our ticket punch right there. Um, yeah, we can go back to the... Uh, plants and interior decorations. I'm going to put some curtains in here as well. You guys are going to be really tired of curtain props here in a minute. I'll do one like this. Shrink it down. Make sure I'm shrinking the curtain, not the wall. Kind of block the way to get behind the counter now. So that may not be the best place for that curtain. But I like the fancy look that it gives off that pillar. Hmm. I almost want the blackboard to be front and center now. Yeah, I'll move this painting just aside for now. I 
anything else that would work well in here. I'll give him a radio just for staying in communication with the rest of the uh, workers here. Ah, a hamper. Okay, so I'm thinking now, I would bet that Joel's character would have a way of being like, oh, we'll, you know, dry clean your uh, your clothes for you. And then he's going to like charge you a huge fee to get him back or something. I'll place it there for now and let Joel do the design for it, uh, for why it's there. Or maybe it's just what the fresh towels are being stored in. Of course, we got the soap trays and all. We'll be adding those to the medium section at another time. Those are sheets. <laughs> towels are right here. For an extra fee, I'm sure. Excuse me. Settler. Why is everybody getting so pushy all of a sudden? Probably have a guard standing here uh, in the back corner. Why is everybody standing here? Any other details we can add? A vault tech water cooler. Very premium. Very exclusive. Wow, okay, it's getting crowded, guys. Seriously. gonna do any broken mirrors that doesn't add to the premium feel at all ah coat rack that does fit the premium feel object physics off lock it in place do a fancy clock instead of a painting just because I don't think we're going to be able to fit uh, any paintings in here okay that's all of our interior spaces how about our floor coverings ah yes the large red rug I'll turn snapping off or surface snap off for a minute I'm going to have to resize these, but uh, we've got the marble floor, and we'll just add one of these here. Resize it a few times, uh, like so, and it's gone. <laughs> Move the floor to find it again. There we are. I'll just basically have these two pieces of red rug that kind of just lead up to the uh, podium here. Guys, I can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, here. You're so insistent. Let's make one of you a guard and see uh, how you can do with security. Let's see, homemaker, defense, guard posts. So she use this mat, which is technically a guard post. And uh, wow, none of you look like guards at all. I'll have to give you some outfits later. You with the farmer's hat and pipe pistol. <laughs> You're a guard. Get over there. Or 
just stand there. Whatever. Oh, we do need something for this wall. Ah, uh, creative clutter. What do you have for the walls? Wall decorations, miscellaneous, bathrobe. Ooh, for the premium section. Let's hang the bathrobe up. Uh, you get one of those before you head up. But I think I'm going to have signs on these parts of the wall right here, like, you know, premium, low value, and, and whatnot. So I'll leave that wall blank and put the robe in the back corner here. It's not wanting to go right, so I'll just place it manually. <laughs> and it's stuck in the wall. Uh, mod position, X minus 5. Nope, wrong direction. X5. There we go. Get back here. Okay, so there's our rug. It'll just be hanging back in the corner there. Anything else to fit in here? No wreaths or anything like that. Oh, I do want to look at homemaker decorations one last time. Uh, not for floor coverings. What was I looking for? I completely forgot, guys. Oh, plants. That's what we can use. This machine somewhere else? No. It's kind of all the space we've got. What do you guys think? Keep our premium cigar table with the candles and probably a painting here or the cigarette machine because I don't think I can fit both. <laughs> or can always put it in the tub out here, like halfway in the water. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, because I'm thinking a plant would look better in this corner. Maybe I'm wrong now. Shrink it down a spit. Okay. Desktop plants. I don't want to get too crazy here. <laughs> I say as I realize that I am almost completely out of room. Decorations. Uh, would one of these light up posters fit? Do they require a individual power lead? Ah, there's a couple of cigarette ads. That would be a perfect fit if there's one of these boxy ones. Lots of communism ones, baseball. Blast radius. Uh, Boston bugle. Yes. Now we just need a conduit. I'll glitch that through the guys. <laughs> I'll have to glitch myself through all these settlers. Excuse me. And I'll just uh, put it up here with that power source. Guys. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that. 
famous cigarettes available at the register. I think this is starting to feel like what Joel had envisioned for the uh, honeypot, if you will, to get unsuspecting travelers to pay their hard-earned caps to experience Uncle Joel's premium bathhouse funhouse. So, I mean, if I saw this, I would definitely want to know what's behind those doors. Where does that leave? Um... Honestly, guys, I think we're about done in here. At least for now, until I make those custom signs. So we're going to put a custom sign there. And there. Pricing sign on the blackboard. Guard post there. Probably put a guard uh, standing here. Maybe smoking or something behind the podium. He's uh, checking your tickets before you go in. He'll escort you. You go this way to either the crappy catwalk that goes to the crappy sewer pit or up the premium elevator to the bathhouse, uh, upper stories, and the branding facility, if you guys remember that from the design document. If you want to leave, you have to swear allegiance to Joel's faction, which does not have a name just yet. You guys did have some fun suggestions, but again, nothing decided just yet. Yeah, I won't do anything with the neon for now. Thanks for your help fighting them off. Wow, all right guys, take it easy. I didn't want you to have all the fun. <laughs> if that's what you call fun, I'm glad you're on our side. You showed up just in the nick of time. So I've heard. That's why they're all clustering around me. Okay. Alright, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and just get past these guys here. I'm gonna... Thanks, Thanks for your, your help, help, pal. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna hide this painting for now. Make room for the anarchy flag. Perhaps that would be a better fit for the corner. Maybe it's time that Joel's faction got their own flag, actually, besides just anarchy. I might have to work on that a little bit before next time. It would have to be like the exact opposite of General Dave's order and safety. I mean, the anarchy flag that's okay but it's gonna be like Joel branded yeah I think I'm gonna work on that texture for next time to wrap things up for today because I want to hear what you guys think of the updated uh, premium upper section let's go to homemaker fences miscellaneous barriers and let's get our waiting line set up place a couple of these back here but I want to use the rope ones for the front section oh man my settlers are gonna get stuck <laughs> so bad on these Starting to look pretty premium. Then I'll just have a few of these uh, steel barriers out here for controlling the crowds. I would imagine that. There's almost no time when these lines are actually completely full of people. 
it just looks impressive like oh holy crap what are people waiting here for look at all these lines <laughs> all right guys i'll show you all one last look at the upstairs up area just in the nick of time. so i'm looking for some feedback on that for sure it's good to get back in the saddle though and get designing once again it did line up nicely that i had a bit of a time for some break over christmas right after finishing the bedford station settlement it's always good to get a, a bit of a well just creative break after a settlement as large as bedford station was but I'm feeling that inspiration again. There's how the current glass bathhouse is looking. That's pretty awesome with that purple light. Let me know what you guys think. For now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.